pencil. It's always good to kind of figure out what your figure is doing. We always start usually with a head. And that will give you the size of the body that you'll be working with. Because it's always usually the same amount. Usually with superheroes, you do a smaller head than you do in real life. Uh, the experiment page doesn't look like a bubble head. I'm not saying that humans look like bubble heads. <laughs> the superheroes look more masculine. It's a very skinny spider man. I'll have to be doing that here. You'll be able to see this better once I've started inking it. At the moment, we're just getting the rough. Bit. It's going to have to be very quick this one. Okay, so that's usually all I need. And then usually I will ink with a brush and ink. Um, so I'll go in onto the page straight with the brush and the ink. This time I'm just using a, a marker pen. Okay, let's get a spice on that in. Get the outlines going first so you can see what I'm doing. Stanley, who created the Marvel Universe. He always came up with different ideas. And he went to his publisher, went to Marvel Comics, and he said, I want to do a superhero called Spider-Man. Spider-Man. And the publisher looked over here and said, you're crazy. He said, there's no way we can sell anybody called Spider-Man because everybody hates Spider-Man. So there's no way this is going to sell. Uh, but he stuck to his guns. Spider-Man became a 
massive factor. Well, obviously, the publisher was wrong. Sadly, was wrong. Now, when you, you've been drawing a lot, or if you're just starting, it's important to know the anatomy. That's like all the muscles, how, how a figure will hold themselves. There's all the experience to know where the muscles are. Like. To do that, it's good to observe. With any artist, I always say, it's good to observe from life. Look at life, look around you, try to draw what's around you. If you have to know how everything works in front of you, then you can exaggerate it more. What comics are about? Superhero comics. They're all about exaggeration. Don't worry, we're talking more later. <laughs> so a page of comics usually takes about a day to draw. Because they're using A3 size, they're not really size. So it's usually one page per day. That's how long it will take. Because you're always wondering which way around should they go, how many should they be. Spider-Man, after a while, you kind of get to understand that all the webs just go in a circle kind of around his face and then away from his face. You have to kind of wonder how to start with that. And the best thing to remember is when you draw the first web, there's some inky eyes. It looks like a sad Spider-Man. It's got a little sad face going on. Let me put the rest of the webs in. So let's put them together. Obviously, this is a very quick version. Fantastic Four, 
Goose, Rocky Raccoon, Thor, Venom, and then I printed in Stephen King's The Stunt novel. For DC Comics, I've worked on Green Lantern, Four Things, Justice League, Superman, and I've just recently wrapped up the Batman movie series. There are slides in which you can the last one. But what I want to talk to you about today are dreams and believing in those dreams and working hard to make those dreams a reality. Now, you may dream of becoming a footballer, a ballerina, an influencer or TV star, a musician, a movie star, a train driver, a doctor, a lawyer, or a teacher. And these are all worthwhile things to pursue if it's something that you truly believe in. From the age of two years old, I was picking up comic books, and reading them, looking through them, studying them. Studying those illustrations, and it was around about when I was six years old that I realized that maybe this was something I could do myself. When I was growing up, there wasn't really the opportunity to pursue this. There wasn't really the guidance to pursue that dream that I had. It was something I had to strive for myself and endeavor to accomplish on my own through my own hard work and persistence. Initially, I listened to my teachers at school. I had an excellent art teacher uh, called Mr. Parker. And I asked him for advice as to how I could develop my work and hone my style of drawing to push me towards my goal of drawing comics. It's also worth noting that you may find some unexpected allies within your school where you least expect them. My English teacher, Mr. Cooper, found me doodling in my notes during my classrooms. And he asked to see what I was doing, and I thought I was in huge trouble. I was listening to him, scratching away. And he looked at my notes, and he asked if it was a character from Marvel called Deadpool. And I was surprised and confirmed that indeed it was Deadpool. And he confessed to me how he absolutely loved the character. And he talked about some of the writers and some of the runs of the comic and some of the artists in the comic. And he offered advice, and most importantly, he offered encouragement. After school, I went to art college in Baltimore, just outside Birmingham, and I followed this with a business course so that I knew how to manage my talent properly. As a creative person, you have to be your own publicist, your accountant, administrator, time manager, and also you have to be your very own strict boss. All rolled into one. And you also have to leave time to do the actual drawing as well. So I have two distinct stories about how I broke into comics. The first being the usual route at the time, which was to get an agent in London who would show your work around to prospective clients. The first time I met Patrick Kelleher at Temple Rogers Early Stadium. He told me I was about six months away from becoming a professional, and he gave me constructive criticism and advice as to how to get there. Now, it's not easy listening to constructive criticism, but as long as that person you were talking to knows what they're talking about, and you have a certain respect for them, you can take that in and you can absorb it, and you can put that into your creative pursuit. Into any pursuit, you don't have to be So I met him again six months later, and to his surprise, I actually listened to him and put into practice the advice he had given. And he managed to get me work that very day on a comic called 2000 AD, which was my utmost favorite comic when I was growing up. And it's one of the three the second story of how I broke in is how I managed to work at Marvel in UK. I had a friend, Paul Birch, who was a writer, and he always recycled paper. 
He would send you the letter, and on the other side of the letter would be something he did make anymore, like a bill or a shopping list, things like that. He sent a few story ideas to Marvin and Dave, and they replied that although they loved the ideas he would send in, they couldn't use them at that time. First, they asked, who did the illustrations on the back of the And that's how I got into Marvin, which is a very different route than getting an agent. I continue working, and this is where the persistence begins to pay. The work begins to go like a snowball. Gathers up the momentum, you get more and more work. And you start to gain a reputation as someone who's reliable, someone who's talented, and somebody who's easy to work with. Those are the things anybody is looking for in any business. It's easy to become arrogant and obnoxious about the talent. And probably more so in the creative industry because you have to possess a certain amount of self confidence. And that's something that also comes with age and experience. I was incredibly shy until I was in my early 20s. But I learned that you could acknowledge that fear that you had, that you didn't need to be afraid of that fear, which is a very important lesson. But it's also amazing how much you can achieve by being present and being on time. I worked for 2008, James Workshop, Oxford University Press, DC and Dark Horse, building up that reputation. And then I was headed by Crossgen, a comic company in the USA. And I relocated to Florida to work with a number of my peers in the studio center. I was there for three years and I learned so much, educating myself about artists, and you live on that, and making strong, lifelong friends. This eventually led to a contract with Marvel for 14 years, and DC for five years, which led me up to this present day. I draw every day, and I still love it. I work on Batman, and I'm like an eight year old boy. Growing up in Wolverhampton, I dreamt of sci-fi cities and superheroes, of Gotham and Metropolis. And there's still so much to do in New Mountains to climb. And it's often said that if you find a job that you love, you will never work a day in your life again. And although it's a nice sentiment, it's not necessarily true that that hard work becomes a reward unto itself. That sense of accomplishment. So, you probably have these kinds of dreams to yourself. You have your own dreams. And I'm here to tell you that through determination, through hard work, and persistence, and yes, through education, you can accomplish 